Yo, have you heard about Anchor? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we are going to be going over WrestleMania 37 that just concluded. We got the wrestling forum with us. We got Jacob Mason, our wrestling expert. How you doing today, sir? Fantastic, buddy. And then we have the El Capitan, Byron Mitchell. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. (laughs) I'm doing good. (laughs) <laughs> so we are going to be going over night one and two of wrestlemania if you haven't listened to our wrestlemania preview make sure you check that out to see who we in these matches and obviously if you didn't watch wrestlemania watch wrestlemania you can watch that one um so yeah wrestlemania 37 before we even go in the matches we had a weather delay i think the first one in wrestlemania history like we had you know 40 minute weather delay. And yes. To be honest, that weather delay, I think, helped night one because you saw some shoot promos in the back that people had to think on the fly. Byron, what did you think of the weather delay? I thought it actually, like you said, it definitely helped kick off night one of WrestleMania with the fans back. I mean, it sucked for the fans that they, you know, first WrestleMania back in a year that was a weather delay. But those promos, oh my God. When Bobby Lashley told MVP, let me drop his ass here right now. I got <laughs> hyped. I was like, yes, let's go. That that was that was good. Jacob, man, we talk about this all the time. When you let the wrestlers think for themselves, they can shoot some promos. Yes, yes, they can. This is this is a very prime example of just let them do their thing. Uh, my favorite shoot promo that we had uh, was Kevin Owens going on about his basic life story with Sami Zayn because that felt real because it was real. And I, I, I loved it. I think, though, I said this uh, I said this is on our group chat. I think this is going to be the last outdoor WrestleMania. We'll see. Yeah, because yeah. Vince McMahon is pissed off at God because he made it rain <laughs> on WrestleMania. All those, the storyline with Shawn Michaels has finally come back to bite him in the ass because they had a half hour rain delay. <laughs> um, the one thing I did think, though, like during uh, during the delay was I got to imagine there was one guy in the back who's part of the board who was like, I told you, Vince, I've been telling you for years. It, was, it wasn't going to last. You're going to get rained out. Huh. I just can't imagine. It's like <laughs> one guy back there. Like, I told your ass. We expect. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I mean, I, all those WrestleManias that have been out in those big stadiums and it, for it to be uh, raining, that was wild. But, hey, was, they, they figured it out. We got some good promos. And, yeah, I think also we have to talk about, you know, the tagline, back in business. Seeing real fans, man, it, it, it got me a little emotional. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Like, seeing real fans, hearing real cheers. And I knew they were real because they started booing stuff. Like <laughs> that, that was wild. And Byron, how did you feel seeing fans again for the first time in over a year? I didn't think we would have this day, but I'm glad we did. It definitely made it feel like a real, not saying that the Thunderdome is not a real wrestling show. It just made WrestleMania that much better with fans back. Jacob, what'd you think? Um, I- yeah, I love seeing fans. That that was awesome. But let's be honest, they were still piping in uh, oh, yeah. cheers, yeah. booze, and other chants, uh, which I will promptly call out in one match we'll talk about later. 
where <laughs> I will talk shit, but that's for that's in due time. Yeah, man. man before we talk about the matches, I also want to talk about some crazy, crazy stats for you guys. Uh, this was the first WrestleMania since 2003 not to feature John Cena in any capacity. Uh, this is the first one since 2012 not to feature Brock Lesnar. This is also the first WrestleMania since 1988 not to feature one of these three, John Michaels, Triple H, or Undertaker. And this is the first WrestleMania since 2010 to have an on-screen appearance by Vince McMahon. So I just wanted those those crazy stats out there. And Vince came out to uh, thank the fans, all that stuff. Obviously, Sean, Triple H. Well, Triple H typically has a, something at WrestleMania, but they're done. Uh, Lesnar, somewhere in Canada. And the only reason John Cena couldn't do it is because he was filming Peacemaker. If he wasn't filming Peacemaker, he'd probably be there. But, yep. yeah, let's let's get right into it, man. Night one, and you start off with the WWE Championship match between the champ, Bobby Lashley, and the challenger, Drew McIntyre. I'm going to throw it to Jacob. Bobby Lashley came out with the win. How did you feel about this match, starting off WrestleMania? Um, I was good with it. To go back to our last podcast where I complained about the championship not being on last, uh, being how you have multiple championships here, um, if your championship is not going on last, it should go on first. You set the tone for WrestleMania. This was a, this was a solid match. Mm-hmm. It wasn't phenomenal. It was just a really solid match. It was a good match. Uh, I think the right person went over, though. I was a little shocked to see uh, Bobby go over. I kind, I had a, I picked Bobby in my pickums, but I thought Drew was going to go over. I was wrong. Well, I was wrong for that, but right picking Bobby. So I, I was good with it. I, I liked it. Byron, what did you think of the match? Were you good with it? I was good with it. Um, I figured it would go first since uh, Sasha and Bianca Belair was a main event. So I figured this match would go first. On the podcast, I said Bobby in our pickums. I said Drew because I thought since the fans were back, they'll give Drew that WrestleMania moment. Um, so I got it right on the podcast, but I got it wrong on the pickup. So <laughs> should have stuck with what I said on the podcast, but I'm. Uh, Bobby's a solid choice to retain the title, so I'm not mad with that. He's got some potential storylines heading into SummerSlam or in the next pay-per-view, so we'll see what they do with him. I do think that also Drew and them went first because since Drew basically carried the whole damn company in 2020, that he should have been the first one to experience like that fan juice. Yeah. So I think that's the reason why he uh, they went first. And, yeah, I was good with I mean, I picked Bobby Lashley. Because I was just like, there's no way he's going to wait all this time and to lose. But I would have understand if Drew won. Um, obviously, we're off to WrestleMania. Drew's getting a rematch at the worst thing ever. Don't know why they're calling it WrestleMania Backlash. That is stupid. But Oh, I don't know that was a name. Just call it Backlash. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. What do we know? They don't never make sense. Hmm. Bobby winning was the right move. I also like, if you watch the match, they actually did protect Drew McIntyre. Uh, since he carried the company in 2020, and his finishing move is the Claymore, and you get hit by that, you typically lose, unless you're yep. running Reigns of Survivor Series. But you see how he didn't land a Claymore in that match. When it was coming, MVP yelled, get out of the way. Yeah. So now you have that storyline built going forward. Like, you beat me because MVP warned you about the Claymore. What happens when he doesn't warn you? Can you take a Claymore? And now you have that built in. So like when Bobby kicks out of a Claymore, they're like, oh my God, he kicked out of a Claymore. This is crazy. They did protect Drew in that. He didn't yeah. tap out. He didn't get pinned. Just passed out to the hurt box. Next match, which the match wasn't the story of this match, was the women's tag team turmoil. And the story of this match was when Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke were walking down the aisle and you saw Mandy Rose literally in slow motion just fall right on her ass. And that became the meme of the whole WrestleMania weekend. 
Byron, what did you think? How bad did you feel for Mandy Rose? Because that was embarrassing. I felt bad for Mandy Rose. Her first WrestleMania debut slips and fall on the rain because of, of the weather. Oh, man, it was it was bad. But she made light of the situation. I mean, she got memes for days out of it. It wasn't as bad as Titus O'Neil slipping under the ring, but <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Jacob, how did you feel about that? Um, yeah, I laughed my ass off about that. Um, I did like the fact that they didn't ignore, uh, they didn't, they're, I mean, yeah, they ended up not ignoring that because they knew it turned out to be a meme. And then they had a, uh, I believe it was on raw with, uh, Titus O'Neil saying like, Oh, Hey, it happens to the best of us. It's all good. Like, I, I, I like the fact they acknowledged it. This match though. Well, Jacob. Allow me to take this match. I know if you haven't listened to our NXT standard <laughs> uh, review, make sure you listen to that. Um, and Jacob, you, you hear Jacob talk about the main event of Adam Cole and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. You hear him going a rant. Um, <laughs> night one, I had no. It, well, let me let me just take over this one. If you guys would, if you guys with me, may go for it. <laughs> if you've listened to the L Seven C podcast, and I know you have because we have over a thousand listens. You listen, if you've any listened to any wrestling one for the past year, you know that my relationship on this thing with my best friend Lana is the best relationship ever. She started the third party band. We were here live when it happened. She tried to deny it. She got put through a table for over two and a half months. Um, and we all thought Jacob had the prediction she was going to become champ by SummerSlam at the latest. We all picked their team to win this match. And Lana's team is the first fucking team out. The first team out. I am so sick of this goddamn woman because when I need her to win, she loses. When she needs to lose, she loses. When she doesn't need to mess up, she messes up. Like, for once in your life, I don't know how WWE screwed this up. You had the storyline built for almost two fucking years where Lana was getting bullied by Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. What ultimate redemption is taking the titles off of them? There's nothing else. And on the Raw after WrestleMania, they weren't even on the show. So it's like, I don't know why she's there. I really don't. Because if you're not going to get these titles, like, what the hell are you doing with Naomi? The TikToks are cool and all, but they should have won this match. If it wasn't them, it should have been the Riot Squad because they deserve it. But really, really, the first team eliminated. I don't even know who they lost. Was it Mandy? It was Mandy Rose's team. They lost to the team that had the girl who slipped. That's how bad it was. Like, Byron went to use the bathroom, came out, Lana's team was out. Unless it was like, Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Wasn't it uh, Billy Kay and Carmella? Oh, that's worse. It was Billy Kay. You're right, Billy K- Shout out to Billy Kay. But <laughs> <laughs> it was Billy Kay and Carmella. That's right, because Corey Graves was louder than usual in the end. No. But that's the fact that Lana's team was out first, and that was terrible. Besides the fact, Wyatt the Riot Squad did great. And uh, Natalia and Taomi, they, Tamina, they won. Whatever. They had the good thing on Talking Smack, but I was extremely disappointed that Lana and Naomi were worth it. Carry on. Well, I guess I'll go next. Um, I don't know how to top that, but Lana and Naomi definitely should have won because of the whole storyline. I, like Martin said, I picked them to win. Very disappointed to go in the bathroom. And come well, I hear yelling in the bathroom. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> so I come out I'm like I hear screaming. What happened? He's like Lana and Naomi got eliminated first. I was like, oh well, there goes my uh, pick and points for that match because they only had one point on it. But Lana and Naomi should have won. Riot Squad were impressive. Um, if not Lana and Naomi, they should have won. I have no idea why N- Natty and Tamina won, but whatever. It's WWE logic, I guess. 
Jacob. All right. <laughs> um, first off, we need to have faith. We have to keep the faith. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be Mr. Optimistic here for a couple seconds here. We got to have the faith. Old Juan is going to come through, and she'll end up taking those titles off Naya. Mark my words. I'm still sticking by my prediction. Um, that being said, this match was an absolute botch fest. What a train wreck this match was. Um, I really don't know which match had more botches in it, this match and or the uh, NXT uh, tag team championship match between the women. It was bad all around. Also, there was like three uh, wardrobe malfunctions in this match. Mm -hmm. Because constantly with uh, Mandy Rose, uh, my screen kept going black and then coming back on. So they that's why they... yep. Yeah. So that that's a thing. And uh yeah, Tamina and in, in Natalia, this is that's trash. I mean, did did anyone really be like, oh yeah, Tamina? Oh yeah, Natalia. Anyone give a shit? No. I actually saw a tweet today that said Tamina was WWE's like top baby face of that match. I'm like, she's definitely not a baby face, but go off, I guess. No, the only thing I cared about when it got to day two is that uh, Tamina's been here so long and she's never held one title. And I was like, what the hell? And I was like, when they said that, I thought she was going to win, but we'll talk about that when we get to night. Um, but yeah, that match was the weakest match of the uh, night one. But let's go to, in my mind, how I think we dubbed it on the preview, lose and you got to quit, Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. Uh, this was the biggest, one of the biggest, who was going to win this match. We all know who needed to win this match, but we know that's never really the case. And Cesaro got the biggest win of his career in uh, his first one-on-one -on -one match against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. I thought it was going to be a wrap when he got pedigreed, um, but he was able to pull through, got his swing record. And if Cesaro not beating Seth Rollins in a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania doesn't open more eyes to people in the back, I don't know what will. And I enjoyed the match because I was so I was just so happy for Cesaro. Byron, what did you think of the match? I thought it was a, a great match. I Definitely thought Seth Rollins was about to win about after that pedigree. I was like, well, there goes my points for this match. But Cesaro looked impressive. That one spot where he had Seth Rollins on his shoulders and was doing that airplane spin with no hands was very impressive. I was like, yeah, you gotta you gotta put the battle on him. I I enjoy Cesaro. I Seth Rollins, he's a great wrestler, Mr. WrestleMania, apparently. Um but I think he had a. I think they had an excellent match. I'm, I love it. Jacob, man, what'd you think of this match? Because I know we all said Cesaro needs to win, but we were concerned if if he's gonna win. Because you know, we jokingly call Seth Rollins Triple H's second son. How'd you feel about this match? I I, w I was happy with this match. This was a really good match, um, which I expected nothing less. But damn good match between these two. Um, Super happy Cesaro got the win. I had that three seconds of, oh, hell yeah, let's go. And then it was followed up by dread. Because, oh, no. because I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, yeah, Cesaro just ha won his biggest match of his career. Are they actually going to do anything with him? Because oh. if we follow the past, they don't do jack shit with Cesaro. So I'm just hoping they do something with him. And yeah, I mean, what do you what do you say? It's Cesaro and WWE. Do we after this match, or do we make him number one contender for the Universal Championship? No, no. In in my opinion, here's why: you need if you're going to make him number one contender, you need to make him number one contender for a big pay-per-view not wrestlemania backlash which is 
fucking stupid. We need to do it for <laughs> we need to do it for a SummerSlam. Yeah, we need to do it for a Rumble. We need to do it for uh, a Mania. It needs to be one of the big pay per views because if Cesaro goes over, there's your pop. Yeah, there with the fans. Uh, I could. S- I know, I know it's not a big four pay per view, but it might as well be considered like right below it because it changes a lot of things. Money in the Bank that has provided some legendary matches and changed the course of wrestling forever. I, that's a pay per view where if they don't do SummerSlam, I mean, you could you could start the feud there, or he wins the briefcase, which I can't wait till we, when we get to that time talking about. Who needs to win the briefcase? Because who we're all gonna have some different. Yeah, yeah good on. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> good on Cesaro. Can't wait to see what he does. Uh, the next match uh, was AJ Styles and Omos versus the New Day. On the preview, Jacob was the one who told us that if AJ Styles were to win this, he would be the only Grand Slam champion WWE and TNA. And I know for my um, wife, her favorite wrestler who she's gravitated towards is Oma because he's just really big and doesn't talk <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> for some reason he's gravitated towards that but this was the shortest match of night one and uh, it was built exactly how we thought it would be they waited they made us wait for the Oma's hot tag and he came in dominated hitting him with one foot and AJ Styles Making history, Grand Tram- Grand Slam champion, different promotions. I don't know if there's that much to really talk about in this match. I mean, just congrats to AJ and New Day, the professionals. They did the job, and can't wait to see how much Omos grows. Anything else you guys want to add to that? I think the right people won. I mean, I think we all picked AJ Styles and Omos to win. I mean, uh, he looked impressive the short time he was in there. He looked dominant, which we want for a big man. So I don't have any problems with him winning. Yeah, I think uh, I-, I did like how they built in this match towards that hot tag with Omos. Mm-hmm. And once Omos got in, you know, he just started beating ass. And, you know, that looked good and everything. I was kind of a little bit torn, though, even though, like, I had AJ... Yeah, I picked AJ and I was glad to see him go over. He's, you know, a uh, grand slam of two different companies now. But part of me was kind of torn on this. And here's why. So you have Omos and AJ. AJ's the, the freaking man. Okay. But then you have the New Day, who's undoubtedly one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Certainly yeah. in modern WWE. They're the, they're the GOATs. Hands down, modern WWE. Does anyone else think it's kind of weird that you have the greatest tag team in modern WWE lose to a tag team that literally just got formed basically out of the blue? Has, and in their first match, they beat them. Like, is that kind of, I mean, I was okay to see them win, but at the same time, like, I was a little torn on that. Yeah, I get what you're saying with that point. I think my only counter to that is because that makeshift team that was made had a monster. That's the only reason, like, you could sell that. The dude's yeah. seven three over, like, 300-something pounds that we looked up the stats on Saturday. Go ahead, Byron. No, I, I agree with Jacob's point. I love the New Day. They're 11-time WWE Tag Team Champions. They are always have great matches. Um so it would have ni- been nice to see them get a win at WrestleMania, but like your point, Martin, because they had a big man, you, you can see why they AJ Styles almost won, but I get where Jacob was coming from. Okay, I, agree. I agree. I don't think there's really that much to uh, go on that. The other match, which we also was a we know who should win, but you know. Uh, it's Braun Strowman against Shane McMahon in a steel cage match. And we were wondering how the hell are they going to make this competitive? And they started off with, don't know how Shane McMahon became best friends with Elias. <laughs> Beating down Braun Strowman uh, before he even got in there. And there were times where I was like, if Shane wins, I'm walking out. Just- <laughs> out of your own house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. 
And Braun Strowman, he 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 had the spot where I didn't know it was possible to rip the steel cage with his bare hands. That was super Braun Strowman. And Jacob, you're you're a Braun Strowman guy. You like him. How did you feel about this match? I, I was happy with this match. Um, this was this was an entertaining match. It had the high spot that we all expect from Shane McMahon. Um, how that man is that old, and maybe it's because he only wrestles once a year, but he takes some hellacious bumps and he does them so good. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like Shane of old or Shane of present is like the Shane of when he was younger, just trying to prove to everyone, like, hey, I belong here, hey, I'm good. And like he just throws his body, you know, off a steel cage onto the mat and Damn, dude. Like, you don't have to do that, but thank you for doing that. Um, I like the match. I, I like the way it went over. I was expecting, you know, um the winner to escape the cage. Maybe I'm 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 weird like that. Like that's the only way I think you should win a steel cage match. But I mean, like, it fine. That's me nitpicking. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's me being a little bitch. So it's really not that big of a deal. Byron, uh, what do you think? Right person won. Braun definitely should have won this match. There was no way Shane should have won this match. I did think he was about to win before Braun stuck his hand through the like cage and grabbed him, then ripped the cage open, which was very impressive. Um, that's how you want to build a star like Braun, just make him dominant, strong looking. Um, so I think he right won the right way. Not the right way, but he should have won. I mean, I was fine with him pinning Shane because... I feel like Shane deserved to get pinned instead of Braun and Escape is in cage. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the next match is the match that it had the world talking. Uh, the Miz and John Morrison versus Damian Priest and Bad Bunny, the former 24 7, 365, I 95, whatever. <laughs> 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 I, like, Bad Bunny, we all pick Bad Bunny and Damian Priest to win. The celebrity always wins at WrestleMania against mid-level-ish talent. But that wasn't the story of the win. The story of that night, maybe the weekend, was Bad Bunny's performance during WrestleMania. Holy cow. You would think this man is a part of the main roster. Byron. How shocked were you about Bad Bunny's performance? Oh, I was super shocked. First, I didn't think he was going to start the match because celebrities usually don't. Yep. Usually the wrestler will start the match and then let's tag the celebrity win in and then the celebrity will win. But I was very impressive that Bad Bunny held his own for that long in the match for like whenever he was in the ring for held his own, looked like a main player on the roster. When he hit, I think it was Miz or John Morrison with a Canadian destroyer, mm-hmm. I got hyped because that is one of my favorite moves. Spanish fly, Canadian destroyer. Anytime you hit those moves, I always get hyped. Ah, he just looked like he belonged there. Jacob, we have seen celebrities at WrestleMania from Floyd Mayweather. Well, he's not really a celebrity, he's an athlete, but you know what I mean. We've seen Snooky wrestle at WrestleMania before. You are hard on the celebs sometimes, but I remember you were one of those people at the beginning at the Royal Rumble where you were like, who the hell is Bad Bunny? And then you saw how serious he was taking the 24-7 title. Jacob, what did you think of that performance from him, man? That performance was great. Um, Literally all four, I'm just going to say, all four wrestlers in this match. What a wonderful job. Um, I mean, they just he did a Canadian destroyer. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> the things I didn't think I'd see in 2021. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it it is great though. I mean, Martin, like uh, you nailed it on the head. Him coming out in the Royal Rumble to sing Booker T and me going, "Who the hell is this guy?" and why do I care? To now, I'm one of his uh, two million or twenty four million followers on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not much of a fan now. I'm just, just, it's, it's refreshing, 
And I, I talked about I talked about this on our preview shows. It's so refreshing to see these celebrities take this shit seriously. Because Pat McAfee, Bad Bunny. Those are the two most recent, we're going to exclude Logan Paul's dumbass. Um, <laughs> the two most recent celebrities who have absolutely just killed the game. I mean, people who aren't, I mean, there's not a ton of people where I'm from that listens to Bad Bunny, but I mean, you got all these people going, holy shit, sign this guy to a contract. Who the hell is this guy? You know, it's, it's great. This was a win all around. For everybody, everybody won in this match. Yeah, and the bat, the and the Bad Bunny thing was on Sports Center all around. It was on uh, E News, um, entertain like all the stuff. Like it was just crazy. And you brought up the win win thing. Obviously, if you watched it on Peacock after the Bad Bunny match, you saw a commercial with uh, Triple H giving him a briefcase saying, "You did what you need to do here. Now go do what you do best." Gave him a microphone promoting his tours for 2022. So another, again, win-win all around. And I, to be honest, me, I think Bad Bunny had the greatest celebrity run that we've seen because he came in at the Royal Rumble. Um, started, he won the 24-7 title. I think it really solidified it for me before this when he performed with the title at Saturday Night Live. Like when he had the title with him, like with like you know some celebrities, they win that twenty four seven title. They just keep it in there, give it to their secretary until they lose it. He was taking it with them everywhere, and little knows to us that this guy was going to performance center day in day night training because you don't get that good overnight by no means. So and then to come to WrestleMania and perform, and you got you got Randall who we call when we're serious, Randall Orton, sleeping hmm. with celebrities, and other musicians, uh, Soldier Boy, but then he's like, oh, Bad Bunny belongs. Like, that, that's the ultimate compliment, and kudos to them. It was a very fun match. Like, you can tell they were having fun with it, and man, it, I'm kind of sad that Bad Bunny's reign's over. He did his, and the fact, too, that he's a celebrity and was on every Monday Night Raw from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania, we couldn't even get Brock Lesnar to do that. Well, and Brock Lesnar only has one job, and that was this. Like, kudos to that man. Like, I, that's all I. Can. And now we got the main event of night one, which, to be honest, if we're being purists, this is what it should have been. You had the because the Royal Rumble winner always goes to the main event. You had Bianca Belair, who was the Women's Royal Rumble winner against Sasha Banks, the SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, I'm sorry, it's been stated it was the first time two um, African-American women were not only just the main event of WrestleMania, but going against each other for a championship at WrestleMania. And Bianca Belair uh, won the title, as we all said she should, but Man, I, I enjoyed this match. There really wasn't that many hiccups. There were great near falls. You saw Bianca ascending. You saw the star in her, and you saw why Sasha Banks is a four horsewoman and one of the best women wrestlers, not just right now, of all time. And man, when Bianca with the spot with her hair and she smacked Sasha on the side, that was a loud one. And you saw Sasha's ring genius using Bianca's hair as a part of the bank statement. I thought she was going to tap. So, Jacob, what did you think of this main event? This main event. This is storyline, 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 storyline. And what happens when you have... And honestly, you could have went a lot farther with this storyline, let's be honest. This was a half-assed storyline in a way, but it was still a storyline nonetheless. And this match felt so good, felt so emotional. I mean, seeing Bianca Belair crying in the match match. before the match even began, as soon as I seen that, I said, she's winning. There's no doubt she's winning this. Sure enough, she won it. And when she won it, that was was the feel-good moment. That is what wrestling fans just crave we're like Mm -hmm. drug addicts it's what we want 
and having that was man that was that was a magical moment in in wrestling that that's something you're going to be able to look back down the line and be like man you remember that bianca match at wrestlemania my god what a hell of a match that was just it was just wonderful i had nothing bad to say about this match except i wish i had more of it i wish it lasted longer just take me on that emotional roller coaster of a just a great match of a story within a match. Yeah. Good shit. I, 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 Byron, what do you think of the match, man? What did you think? First off, congratulations to Bianca Belair for winning the SmackDown Women's Championship in her debut at WrestleMania in the main event. Excellent. She and Sasha put on one hell of a match. I was invested from the start when they were both in the ring, just realizing what history is being made to Bianca crying to her winning at the end. Uh, it was just an excellent match. That hair whip was devastating at the end. And then she put uh, Sasha Banks in the KOD in one. It was an excellent match. I had, like Jacob said, I didn't have any, there was nothing I could find wrong about this match. Excellent way to end night one of WrestleMania. Yeah. And for the people who obviously know one of my best friends on here is Lana for different reasons. I mean, Bianca Belair, I've said it since last year, November, that she needed to win the Rumble and she needed to get the title. And then she won the Rumble and she got the title. Just like Jacob stayed with the uh, Undisputed Era implosion in the Finn and Karrion Cross, mine one was Bianca Belair getting to this point because we know who, and we'll talk about this in night two, we know who the five best women wrestlers on planet Earth are. We know who they are. But it's the fact that all of them are not going to be around forever. Shoot, you could be, I mean, one of them was gone for most of the year because of having a baby. One was gone because doctors told her she was having a baby, but she wasn't. Uh, The other one wasn't even on the show. She didn't wrestle, but she had stuff with the with the uh, guests and the Hall of Famers, and she had a line where I thought it stole the weekend. But the only there was two of them wrestling, and it was Oscar and Sasha, and they were put in these positions to elevate the next generation. And we'll talk about what Oscar and Rhea, but Sasha did her job. You even, if you watched it later, you even saw Sasha when the camera was on; she was smiling, seeing Bianca celebrate. Uh, her husband came out after the show. She hopped in there with her family. Like that, as Jacob said, that is what wrestling is all about. And one of the ways, like you see those moments, you feel emotional. And, like, you know who needs to win, but then when they start having this good match, you're just like, shit, I don't care who wins now at this point. Mm-hmm. And then once the right person wins, it, it that was a very good way to end night one. Kudos to them. The only thing I would say is that I know people started saying how Sasha's never won at WrestleMania at this point in her career, but... My only thing is that Sasha is always putting these WrestleMania matches to put the other person. It's just the way the stories have been for her. Mm -hmm. I personally thought she should have won a WrestleMania 32, but now seeing who Charlotte is, there's no way she was going to win. Obviously, we thought the turn uh, was she was going to turn on Bailey at 35, no, 36, and it didn't happen. And then she was injured. And then, but it's just the way it's worked out. So, She'll get her WrestleMania win sooner or later. She doesn't need a win to have a moment. Shawn Michaels is called Mr. WrestleMania, and he has more losses than wins. So it's just the way it works. But it was a good, it was a good night one, and kudos to them. Um, we'll be excited. And as Jacob has said, opens more storylines as Bianca Belair's champ. Because now we're gonna see if she can really, if she can carry the title. If she starts messing up, we know that title will be gone by Money in the Bank. So. We'll see if she can carry it. We'll see if she can be a leader. Well, your boy's ready for night two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I've go been ready on. for night two Let's since night two happened. Beer here. We're going to need this. Let's go <laughs> night two. Um, we're going to just do one out of order, then we'll go in order since we're talking about Bianca. Let's just go right into the other the other Raw women's one. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Asuka. Uh, this was theoretically supposed to be charlotte and oscar but as we talked about charlotte was uh told she was pregnant and she wasn't and then she got covid which 
She let the world know on the Raw after WrestleMania. She was directing that towards Byron. But <laughs> he had Rhea Ripley step in. Um, and she went against Asuka and she got the win. And I know we were the first to say it that, and I know I brought this up because this was my big thing. Rhea and Bianca both winning titles on the same day is the same thing as John Cena and Batista winning titles at WrestleMania 21. And if you wanted to make the new era, this is what needed to happen. Rhea beat Asuka. I mean, Asuka, Asuka can lose for the rest of her life. She's still one of the greatest ever. She's number three to me. And I mean, it's the new era. So, Jacob, what did you think of Rhea beating Asuka? I know this is what needed to happen. We all said it, but what did you think? All right. So, uh, you know how uh, when we just talked about Bianca and Sasha and I said storyline, storyline, storyline. Complete opposite. This was the complete opposite and a <laughs> lack of storyline, lack of storyline, lack of storyline. Okay. <laughs> So you had two new, I don't want to say new wrestlers, two of the not top five wrestlers, all right, Mm -hmm. come in, and which one felt more impactful? Bianca Belair. That one felt way more, even if you take out the Royal Rumble, if you just base it on just these matches alone, which one felt more impactful? Bianca Belair. Mm -hmm. Why did we not feel this very Ripley? Because there was no storyline going into it. This is one of these things where, I mean, it was cool. I want to see Rhea Ripley versus Asuka at WrestleMania. I should be excited for that. But really, Rhea coming in last minute to go, hey, I want to challenge you for the title. Like, you just showed the hell up. Who the hell are you and why do I care is what should have been the answer from Asuka. But, okay, she wins. I was uh, like, okay, Ray goes over. We're going to get new storylines. We'll see what happens down the line. Like, I was okay with it, but this didn't feel impactful. Um, this just kind of felt weird. Also, one of these situations of, is Rhea really like a soup? Is she supposed to be a heel because she doesn't feel like a heel, but she feels like a heel? Asuka is just Asuka. And I don't know too many people that don't like Asuka. It, it's one of those things. You, I feel like it needs to be more decisive, heel versus face type deal thing. Also, the intro for Ray Ripley, Ash Costello from New Year's Day, that sounded like absolute trash. <laughs> I mean, my God, I like New Year's Day. I like Ash Costello. I like Ray Ripley, and I like Ray Ripley's theme song. I hated everything about that, literally everything. But it was, it wasn't even that great of a match. No, I, I think it was just Matt Jacob. I do want to add to about Bianca feeling more impactful. And yeah, it was like I said with the John Cena Batista thing because these two were the last two at the Royal Rumble as well as like those two back in the day. But I think the problem with that, besides the storyline, is because Rhea was coming in here probably off of her worst year ever in 2020. True, and I think it also sucked because. She never should have lost to Charlotte at last year's WrestleMania. No, she like so that took away if she her moment, and I get it because I'm the one who made the comparison to the two. But Rhea should have had a moment last year, first she WrestleMania, and you beat who a lot of people are, who when it's all said and done, she'll probably have the most times, and she probably will be considered the coach Charlotte Flair. But you lost to her, and then you have a terrible year, and then you just burst onto the you just come to Raw's like. Yeah, I'm going to challenge it. And it's also, too, I think it hurts because the only reason we know the reason she was in the match because Charlotte was lied to by a doctor. I mean, she wouldn't have been in the match if it wasn't for that. And they, but yeah, I agree. Jacob is just those things like she should have won last year. Her moment, her big moment could have been last year. And this whole narrative changes. Yes. Because then you're building a legacy of, I'm Rhea Ripley, and in my first two WrestleManias, I beat two of the three greatest women of all time, Charlotte and Asuka. Boom. There's your a, there's a legacy right there. Byron, what do you think of this? I thought it was an okay match, um, probably because there was a lack of storyline, um, but I am glad that Rhea won so we can get the new era started because I know I've been clamoring for them to push other wrestlers besides the uh, for horse women and Oscar, and I know other fans have been clamoring for this. So I'm excited to see what the new era does. Hopefully they don't mess it up and they can 
carry the torch for the new era. So we'll see. I mean, and I, look. Go ahead, I don't man. know if Rhea is supposed to be like Jacob. I don't know if she's supposed to be a heel or a face because like against Raquel Gonzalez, she was definitely in the face. But against Asuka, she felt like more of a heel. Yeah. But I'm not sure what direction they're trying to push her in. So and then on top of that, she was playing towards the crowd. Like when mm-hmm. she's doing her entrance and stuff, she's pointing at the crowd. She's playing with the crowd. You're doing face stuff, but also acting like a heel. This shit has got to end. Yep. I agree. I agree. Um, we got we got to talk about it. We, we got to. I know we skipped around because we wanted to keep with the uh, the new era of women, but the first match of WrestleMania. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to need a beer for this. <laughs> Continue. The first match of WrestleMania, which I'm already going to give you the runtime, was five minutes and 50 seconds. Was Randall, well, Randy Orton, our guy. We like Randy. We do like Randy. Um, against The Fiend. Uh, with Alexa Bliss, you know, The Fiend was burnt alive. This feud's been going on for almost a year. Um, we all picked uh, The Fiend. It was a no-brainer. And, ladies and gentlemen, The Fiend lost to not three punt kicks and three RKOs, not six punt kicks and RKOs. The Fiend lost to one RKO. Byron, we let Jacob go. On the Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. We let me go on my Lana spiel. This one is yours. What the fuck was this match? What the fuck? Like, Randy Orton should not have won. I don't care how WWE tries to spin this. I don't care what WWE creative has to say. I don't even care what Alexa Bliss has to say about this. Randy Orton should not have won this fucking match. It should have been Fiend. If they wanted to make it five and a half minutes or five minutes and 50 seconds, whatever they wanted to do, Fiend should have won this. It should have been one sister Abigail over. Let's get him to the next storyline. Um, he had a cool entrance coming out of the Jack in the Box. I thought that was cool. Um, I like how you change from like fire fiend to regular fiend. Um, but to lose to Randy Orton with one RKO is utter bull shit. Alexa Bliss popping out of the Jack in the Box distracting him is utter bullshit. Like I could see if it had distracted Randy Orton because Randy Orton does not like Alexa Bliss. That would have been cool. Like that would have added something to the WrestleMania storyline, the match, whatever. But the Fiend getting distracted by Alexa Bliss is one of the well, the Fiend losing and getting distracted by Alexa Bliss is one of the worst WWE creative decisions I've seen in like the last five years. This was utter bullshit. I am mad. I'll probably be mad for like the next couple years. They do not fuck with the Fiend. I don't even know why I chose the Fiend. To win this match because they don't like the Fiend for some reason. They don't like Bray Wyatt. They keep they the way they treat Bray Wyatt is just super shitty. Like the fans love him, everyone loves him, but WWE creative. I don't even know if Vince likes him at this point. If I'm Bray, I want out of this contract. I want to go to AEW, New Japan, somewhere. I don't want. I, I don't want to be in WWE anymore. I, uh, the only the only thing I have match. to add before, before I go to Jacob is. My man John Cena did the that match last year for this. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, Jacob. Jacob. His, wait, wait. Oh, if, nope. I oh. got more. His revenge tour went on this long <laughs> revenge tour. I'm gonna beat everyone that I've ever lost to. Get to Randy Orton, who he lost to at WrestleMania and lost his championship was like three years ago. Thirty four. Yeah. Thirty four. Yep. And then loses to Randy Orton again off of one RKO. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are they thinking? I don't understand WWE. Like, WWE logic sometimes is just utter bullshit. And this is a prime example of WWE setting up a storyline with one winner and then last minute changing it to have someone else win. That doesn't make sense. Like, I don't, I don't know where they go with Bray Wyatt after this. 
I know they're setting up like Alexa Bliss. Oh, I conquer the darkness or I embrace the darkness or whatever. But that doesn't make sense. Like you accept it. Bray Wyatt into your life and got possessed by him. Now you're getting rid of Bray Wyatt. Like it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Now I'm done. Jacob, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah. So as the head of the cult of Bray Wyatt (laughs) fan club. Uh, Byron, you talking about the worst creative decision in the past five years. Um, I would like to add to that. Just add Bray Wyatt's entire fucking career. Because this is trash. This is absolute trash. How are how are we the, the fans? OK, if you want to treat us like we're complete idiots, like WWE does. Mm-hmm. How am I supposed to believe in the fiend? How am I supposed to believe in Bray Wyatt? Considering anytime you build him up and things are finally, finally starting to look right because you got to go through the shit to get there. When it finally mm-hmm. starts to go good, they just drag you right back. Mm-hmm. They just you don't you don't look strong. You look weak as hell. You're not believable. And let's be honest, this Firefly Funhouse, this Fiend storyline, this character as a whole is hands down been the most creative, most unique, coolest thing they've done in a long time on the main roster. How do you how do you fuck up something that is so precious and just destroy it? I don't understand it. I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he no sold the entire match, made him look strong. He comes back as a fiend, no longer as Melt Man. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I, I just don't understand the logic. It's trash. There's a lot of trash. And to start, this is what starts night two, by the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why, why would this start night two? You're setting a tone for night two, which, hey, swerve. They swerved us. They set the tone because everything was a swerve after this. Yeah, they started with bullshit and the whole night was bullshit but we'll get to that yeah yeah we'll get to that it was trash i'm not a fan i'm pissed off how am i supposed to be a bray wyatt fan and with this trash i have nothing i don't i don't have anything much to add besides alexa bliss amount that crazy stuff that has been memed all over the world but this this was not the move at all that's all you guys have already hit the nail on the head this was not the move i thought we could I thought him losing to Randy Orton at the pay-per-view where he got burnt alive. I thought that was bad enough. But then to really, really lose the feud? Like, that's... Yeah, that's all I can say on that. Worst booking decision of 2021. Also, isn't Randy Orton supposed to be, like, off of TV for a while? Like, is that the rumor? So why Mm -hmm. wouldn't you have him lose in, like, a dominating fashion? at WrestleMania to be off of TV for a while. That's the rumor that's going around. So it just, none of this makes sense. And there's nothing that can come out that would tell me that it'll, it makes sense. Nope. It was very bad. That, that, that's all I got on that. It was, I was mad for Bray Wyatt. I was also mad for myself because I put 13 confidence points on that match and he lost a one fucking RKO. So I'm gonna. I'm really gonna sit on this one probably till SummerSlam. Like guys, Randy Orton beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. What? Like, no. Like, hold on. He he didn't beat Bray Wyatt. He beat Bray Wyatt again at WrestleMania. Oh, that's true. Again. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I promise everyone we won't take too much longer on this match. Uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defeated Naomi and. Not Naomi, I'm sorry, Natalia and Tamina by physical submission. Uh, the only the only spot I liked in this match is when Naya told Tamina that she's King Kong, bitch. Like that was the only <laughs> spot I liked in this match. And besides that, I was I was shocked that Naya and Shayna won just because I thought this was gonna be the breakup to make them singles competitors again. But that's all I have on this match. Jacob, you have anything you want to add? No, because it should have been Lana and Naomi going over on those two. So this was trash. 
Um, there was a lot of fan piped in bullshit though on this match. Yes, there a lot was of fake cheers on this. No one, and I repeat, absolutely no one is cheering on Tamina Snuka. Nobody. Show me one real Tamina fan. Show me one. I I don't know one. I don't know one person that goes, oh hell yeah, Tamina. No one gives a fuck about Tamina. Nobody. Byron, do you care about Tamina? Um, I mean, she's cool. Like they haven't really built her up. Like they keep. I'm not gonna say she's like another Bray Wyatt where they keep building her up. Like she, they keep bringing her back in like these storylines that not that really don't matter. And she's supposed to be like this dominant person, and then like then she's off of TV for a couple months. Then she comes back and must be this dominant person. Then she's off of TV for a couple months. So I don't know what they're doing with her. Like this was just two heel tag teams going against each other for a championship. Like that's why they had to pipe in the cheers because no one's cheering for them. Like they're both heel teams. Like if you want a baby face team, have a riot squad or a lot of Naomi when like, a lot of Naomi should have won, but they didn't. So yeah, this was, it was okay. Yeah. I have nothing to add on that. Lana and Naomi should have been in the spot as Jacob said. And, yeah, and Nia and Shayna Wizzing was puzzling. Uh, next match uh, was Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn at a WrestleMania, but they had Logan Paul. Uh, it was a singles match. I actually felt like this was a good match. I don't think it was one of my uh, Kevin Sami uh, Kevin Sammy interaction type matches, but I, I thought it was actually a pretty good match for the time they got, and I do feel like the right person won, and then obviously, yeah, Hit Logan Paul with a stunner at the end to make the crowd happy, but my same criticisms, get rid of the stunner. It ain't you. Go back to Papa Powerbomb Kevin Owens. That's all I had on that. All right, what do you think? Yeah, I think you should go back to the Papa Powerbomb. Like, when well, you see the stunner, you just associate with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and, mm-hmm. and then the Papa Powerbomb is Kevin Owens' finisher. Like, he should go back to that. I think he hit it once in the match, and then I think Sami Zayn kicked out of it. So I think he should go back to that and they need to protect that finisher because it looks devastating. Um, I thought the right person won. I'm not sure why Logan Paul was there. He really didn't do anything in the match. Um, Usually when you have a celebrity appearance like that, usually they're interfering like Gronk did with um, Mojo Raleigh a couple years ago. But Logan Paul just sat there. He wasn't on the announcer's table like he was at the announcer's table but he wasn't doing commentating he was was just sitting there it was i don't know why he was there but kevin owens and sam zane put on a good match jacob okay uh this was a this was a good match uh it was not a great match it was a good match Mm -hmm. i expected more of the match um with the low what i think i i picked sammy to go over on this i still think Sammy should have went over on this. But okay, we're going to say Kevin goes over. That's fine and dandy. You know where they made their biggest mistake? Was at the end. When you have Logan Paul talking shit to Sammy Zayn, and then you got Kevin looking at Logan Paul like this fucking guy. And what they should have done is have Kevin Tell Sammy to come back into the ring, and they both should have beat Logan Paul's ass. Boom. You have a new tag team. You now have the two enemies that are now friends, best friends, like they always have been. That would have been easy storyline. That would have continued, or that would have started new storylines. That would have made sense. That would have been cool. Um, The Logan Paul thing, I really, I don't know why he was there. He didn't do shit. My biggest question is, how much money did he make off that? Because he had to have made some money. Mm -hmm. And he got a front row seat to a WrestleMania match. I mean, pretty freaking sweet. So, I, I, it was a good match. I was, I guess I was okay with the the winner. I think it should have been Sammy, but they really screwed up at the end, in my opinion. I I think the only reason they had Logan Paul is just because he was hot at the moment. I mean, after knocking out Nate Robertson and they needed a celebrity for night two, even though 
That was that was his brother. That wasn't even him. Oh, that's true too. That was it. Well, they couldn't get his brother. He was busy. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It wasn't. Yeah. No. That's not much. They need celebrities. Uh, another to me, another WTF match. Matt Riddle versus Sheamus. You want to talk about storylines? This barely had any storylines, and it was for the United States Championship. And even though the spot to me was cool when he did the backflip into the bro kick, Matt Riddle had no business losing this match. Like, what the hell was that, Jake? I'm gonna start with you. What did you think about this match and Sheamus going over? Like for what? I feel like Sheamus went over just so there was another title change and there would be a pop at WrestleMania. I feel like that's the only reason it went over. I, I don't know why Sheamus won. It makes it makes no sense. There's no storyline. I don't care. It, it's dumb. Um, that spot at the end though was cool. Yes, I really thought because the end of that match is basically Riddle looking all super pissed off and just bleeding. And I'm thinking like, oh shit, they're going to come in tomorrow and Riddle's going to be hot and just watch them just murder Sheamus. Just give me a pissed off Riddle instead of just goofy Riddle. They didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> I do find it kind of funny though, that ending. You know they just completely ripped off NXT. Mm -hmm. With Adam Cole super kicking uh, Ricochet. Ricochet. Mm -hmm. I mean that they just ripped it off. That's all they did. So, but it was it was an okay match. Actually, this is that at that point, this was when I watched this match. This was probably my favorite match so far that I've seen of the night during this time so far. Myron, anything you want to add on this match? I know you were also hot about this. Like, what the hell was this? Why did Sheamus Why? win? There was no. <laughs> There is no point. Like Sheamus, he doesn't need to win. He's won everything. I think he's a Grand Slam champion. I think the only and thing a Royal has Rumble a, winner and, and Royal Mom, King of the Ring. So, mm -hmm. if you're trying to do this whole new era stuff, Riddle should have won. Yes, he is his WrestleMania debut. He comes in as a champion. There was no reason Sheamus should have won. Like as soon as he did that backflip, I was like, yeah, it's over. Sheamus is about to win. Sheamus <laughs> won. One bro kick is all it took. It, I don't know. I I don't know what WWE is creative is was thinking on this night, but man, they've made they made some couple choices at this point that were oh. not not cool. Oh, we're gonna keep it going too because we had another title match. We had Apollo Crews versus Big E. Big E got a concert <laughs> from Wale at the beginning. And the dude who got the concert lost in the Nigerian drum fight. I thought Apollo Crews was going to come out with the Nigerian army, and he did not. So that was extremely disappointing for me. And the drums were just around the arena, and they were not even used. And there was a time when Big E hit the big ending. I thought he was going to win. And then, Byron, you know his name. Who came in and saved Apollo? Bob and Tunde. Bob and Tunde. And I was sitting there like, <laughs> are you? I was like, are we really doing this today? Like three matches? Are we really three? Like, are we really just shitting on everyone today? Like, Jacob, what did you think of this? I think this was the most accurate representation of a Nigerian drum match we could possibly get. Because what were we expecting, ladies and gentlemen? We were expecting drums. I was expecting people to be playing drums or people getting attacked with drums. Instead, we got none of this shit and we all got scammed. Therefore, this is the most Nigerian match of all time. Oh. Fucking dumpster heap this was. <laughs> this, was <laughs> this was trash. It was, it was hilarious. Poor, like, poor Big E. It's something else. I don't know if you guys noticed. Big E's got uh, his uh, ring attire had, like, Feed Tampa, which I'm guessing is, like, a massive food bank or something probably down there in yeah. Tampa Bay. Right. The poor right. guys representing Tampa, like, the most, like, face thing you could possibly do, really. <laughs> and then he gets taken out by um, whatever. Bob uh, and Tunde. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, him. Um, who the hell are you and why the hell do I care? You haven't been relevant. That guy hasn't been relevant since Shane McMahon's Street Fighter uh, 2.0 or whatever the hell it was. I almost thought that was great Kali. <laughs> Nah, he was he was hanging out with RVD's rolling papers in the back. Right. Sweet God. <laughs> Which might have been like the funniest spot of the night, in my opinion. Oh, but, for sure. <laughs> but that's irrelevant. Um, this match was fucking dumb. And uh why the hell did Apollo go over? I mean, the, the here's what drives here's what sucks about Apollo. He's a great wrestler. He mm-hmm. he is great. But he is such a charisma fucking black hole. I mean, my friends. Okay, so we had friends over for for Mania. They don't. They literally come over and watch Mania. That's all they do. They show up for Mania. They go away for a year. They come back. They're watching the build, like the promo, the video package build up for this. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, "Hey, pay attention to this guy's voice." And they just start losing it. They're like, "What in the fuck is this shit?" Like. Apollo going from just standard Apollo to Nigerian Apollo. What a scam. That's a, that's that's a theme through all this scamming. <laughs> uh, we have a friend too who was there and he was talking about when I sent him Apollo's Nigerian accent. He was like, What the hell is this? And we were all curious about a Nigerian drum match. He was talking about his ancestors. Uh, it's a thing of war, but that didn't obviously happen. Byron, another WTF one. Yes. First off, it's Biggie's hometown. Mm-hmm. Second, he's repping a charity mm-hmm. on his ring gear. How do you have this man lose? And he got a concert for his entrance. And he got a concert for his entrance. So they <laughs> paid money for Wale to come out, perform for Biggie, for Biggie just to lose because of a returning guy that no one cares about attacks him. And then Apollo. Pins Biggie didn't even hit one of his finishers to pin Biggie. He had an interference, which is probably the most heel thing you can do. Which is, I get if you're trying to make Apollo Cruz's dominant heel have mm-hmm. a bullshit ending, but there is no way this man should have flipped into a table, got hit with a big ending, and then end up winning because of bullshit interference. One of my pet peeves is like when people debut in like matches that they shouldn't debut in. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to have Bob and two day come back, fine. Let them come back a raw after the SmackDown after WrestleMania. That's fine. Don't have him come in to fear in a championship match or like that time Raquel Gonzalez came back against when Dakota Kai was fighting Tegan Knox. There is no way Raquel Gonzalez should have debuted during that match. That's my take on it. Biggie should have won. Biggie got screwed. WWE creative over being dumbasses. We got scammed. Got scammed. Yeah, I'm going to tell, tell you right now, besides uh, Rhea Ripley and Austin uh, having to have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, every match we've talked about, we got scammed on night two. Got swerved. Night two was the swerve city. They were like, what can we do to pick Piss off the fans the most. I know. Let's have people who shouldn't win win the match. <laughs> <laughs> but we are down to the, the main event of the week. Uh, the main event of WrestleMania. We got the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, with Jey Uso and Paul Heyman against the Royal Rumble winner, Edge, and the man who always finds his way to get into the triple threats at WrestleMania somehow, Daniel Bryan. And this match had spots. Uh, Roman Reigns uh, came out on top to end WrestleMania weekend. Acknowledge him as a tribal chief. And man, I'll, I'll tell you, it had some good spots. I did enjoy this match. Obviously, I had a lot invested in this match and our pick em thing because our champion came down to this match. And I enjoyed the match. I, I don't think it saved night two by any means because there's just too many screw ups in night two with the pick. But I did enjoy this match. I think each three performed admirably. And yeah, I think the right person won. Uh, Byron, what would you think of this match? Or the main event? The main event. I actually enjoyed this main event a lot. On the podcast, I said Roman 
was going to win. I should have stuck with that because I changed it to Edge at the last minute because I was just thinking about, oh, he's coming back from a neck injury. He's never lost a championship. Maybe they're going to put him over like they did Kerry and Cross. But no, I should have stuck with Roman Reigns. But I thought it was a great match. There was definitely some good spots um, like that one spot where they both had uh, Roman Reigns in their cross face. Oh, I yeah. thought that was an excellent match with them both screaming, no, you let go. No, you let go. I thought I enjoyed this match a lot. I mean, I was sipping bourbon. I was chilling. It was a good match. And then even before they had them both in the double cross face where Edge had that height and Roman's mouth that came off of the oh, chair. Yep. I was just like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, man. And even the ending to really establish that as Jacob has said, and we've all agreed that this man ain't losing until maybe like next year. He not he pinned both of them. Like to leave it not in doubt. He pinned both of them. Jacob, what do you think of this match? I like the match. Um, this was this was definitely the match of the night for night two, in my opinion. Um that the the spot where they were both cross faced was fucking great. Um, poor Roman's dead. <laughs> and they're just screaming at each other like go. That, that was awesome. And also, sh- you brought up the point with uh, using the pipe or the piece of the chair that broke off. That's mm-hmm. just that's veteran instincts right there. Like, hey, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this to, you know, make this uh, submission look more aggressive, make it look hard, you know, everything. You know, I wish uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly took pointers from that. They should. <laughs> But, uh, man, it, it was a good match. But I knew as soon as I seen Jay Uso after his, like, 87th super kick um, get taken out on a stretcher, I knew. I was like, oh, Roman's winning this because Jay Uso's ass is coming back, and he's going to cause a distraction. Sure as shit. What do we get? We get Jay Uso who comes out, and Roman ends up winning in a dominant heel fashion which Mm -hmm. i was good with i will take that that what storyline 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 the best matches of wrestlemania had at least a half-ass build up to it not some not nothing just half-ass build up imagine that with a full build up i understand we're in this weird covid age and things happen but come on wwe get your shit together um, yeah, I, I was a fan. I, I liked this. It, right person went over. Right way to go over. Uh, Byron, how can you bet against Roman at WrestleMania? Like, how dare you disrespect the head of the table, sir? Okay, first off, I like. I mean, I like Hill Roman. I've said this. I think on the last time we did a podcast all together with the Royal Rumble, I, I think Hill Roman is a great head of the table. I think he's great. I just the whole storyline behind Edge returning, I caused me to doubt. I shouldn't have doubted Roman. He won in a dominant fashion. Um, it does set up storyline because after I thought Edge was going to win after he speared. Um, Daniel Bryan, oh, the, spear. the double spear, the double spear. Oh, my I thought he was about to win. And then Daniel Bryan pulls him out. So they could build a storyline off of that. Just that one moment. Like, oh, I was about to win. But Daniel Bryan pulled me out of the ring. So, I mean, they could build a storyline off of this. I thought, well, at one point when Daniel Bryan got it was a DDT through a table. I thought he was going to come back and win because that's what he did in WrestleMania 30. So they have they this is a good match. I mean. I shouldn't have doubted Roman. I apologize, Roman, if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Roman Reigns, with Roman Reigns, you don't bet against him at WrestleMania unless it's Brock Lesnar. Well, <laughs> that's going to bring up my next point. So initially, I thought next year's WrestleMania was going to be in California and Hollywood, no, but it's now weird. it's okay. But now, okay, so it's going to be in Texas. Yes. Do we get Brock Lesnar versus Roman for Mania next year? Part three. We don't need a yeah. part three. But you want to fill AT&T Stadium? What's a bigger match than Roman versus Brock in Texas? I don't think this is a bigger match, but I, from reading some, this seemed like what could potentially be next main events. Here are the two. If we're already, but oh, just one more thing on the Roman thing before we start projecting next year's main event. That double spear with Edge, I really thought Edge was about to win because it was past 11 o'clock, and I was like, 
oh, and like he speared Jay. Then Roman tried to come in and he got speared. And I was like, holy shit, the dream is about to be. And I was like, Daniel Bryan, good on you. But they all did great. Um, for next year in Texas, I have two main events talking about next year. Um, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I have that. Um, Drew goes to SmackDown after he's done with Bobby, goes to the draft. I think we talked about that on this one. And my next one, this would go against the new era, but these they're known. You finally have it. Main event, four horsewomen, fatal four-way match. That will put butts in seats, and they're going to get a main event, the four of them. That is still left. They have that in their back pocket. Like, we have not had the four horse, all four of them. That means you have Becky's return. Like, Becky trying to be like, I'm trying to get the title I never lost. By that time, Charlotte might be close to 16. So she can say, I'm trying to break my dad and John Cena's record. Like, you have all those things. And then, obviously, Bailey and Sasha want to be the best. Those are my two I'm thinking right now, if they don't get Brock. Hmm. But if Brock Lesnar... I think we're going to be sticking with this two night formula for uh, WrestleMania, which is fine. But I, I do like I takeovers know. on Saturdays, though. I really do. I do too. Do I think WWE? I think they have the formula right. Honestly, I think they every night of the week they have something going on. WWE owns the night. You have all the other indie shows and whatnot doing stuff in the afternoons. You have the afternoons. WWE owns the night. I, I think it's I think it's smart on their end. Oh, I do think I agree. I think it's smart. It's just takeovers on Saturdays are different. Man. Yes, because it's like I don't have to worry about work, like trying to get back. Like people don't have to worry about work or like going to sleep early because they have to go to work. Like that's Saturday night, and also they show why they're better than the main roster on those. I just have too many good takeover Saturday night memories. Yes. You sound like an old man in his NXT prime. It gets me. Take over on <laughs> Saturday and get me pumped for WrestleMania. Like, like WrestleMania Dallas when Nakamura had his debut. I get, oh, come on. Man. But no, I agree. This two night, I guess for us, for like our little friend group, the two night thing is when we do our pick them things, it adds more anxiety and stress it, because you don't sure get it does. over with in one night. You go to sleep on Saturday night like, man, can I come back and win? Like, <laughs> but you're right, yeah. Jacob, on the fact that they take over the week with this two night stuff. But how long can you sell two night tickets, like these two night tickets to fans? Obviously, Listen, if, if anybody can sell out AT&T Stadium two nights in a row, it's Vincent Kennedy McMahon. He's the only man on the UFC can't do it. They couldn't book two, two shows in two nights and sell it out. There's no way Vince McMahon can't. So you're going to see some massive part-timer. That's why you're either going to see Brock or you're going to see Rock at next year's Mania. You don't think John? Man. <sighs> John could be the main event. To try and get could be. You're going to see a massive part-timer come in for the main event of WrestleMania. But I could definitely see that fatal four-way uh, with the four horsewomen match, though. Kuko, or do you somehow throw Beck or uh, throw Ronda into the mix? Oh, wait, Byron, can are you we not talk about fantasy? Ronda? Wait, Byron, are you already trying to fantasy book and saying who goes over in a four horsewoman main event at WrestleMania? Yes. Well, it's probably Charlotte. If it if she's going for sixteen, it has to be her. That's a, that. I feel like this is a something for another episode. <laughs> <because> <laughs> <this> is- <laughs> agreed, <laughs> agreed, agreed. Uh, yeah, I think WrestleMania, I mean, day one was a lot better than day two. One thousand <laughs> percent. I can't shit on WrestleMania just because, man, it just felt so good to be the freaking. Yes. Like I that I can't shit on it because of that reason. And I'm not gonna lie, just a quick tad bit because since the Raw, this was the weakest Raw after WrestleMania ever in yes. my lifetime. Maybe because we went from the fans to the screens, which that pissed me off. But and then there was no surprises. The big surprises were the Viking Raiders 
and Charlotte Flair coming back. Like we knew Charlotte was going to come, even though Charlotte Flair cut a promo for the promos, but there was no surprises at all. Nope. No big returns. It was, I, like you said, it was weak. It was like, weak. I really thought Becky was going to come back. Mm-hmm. I thought we were going to see Tessa. Yes. Yeah, that would have been huge. I mean, we still have Friday, but that, that Raw after WrestleMania where it gets hyped up. Like, you think of the travel packages people buy for just original WrestleMania weekends before two nights. You get the takeover, you get WrestleMania, and then you stay for the Raw after WrestleMania, and then you go home before, like, this new stuff happens. But now it's, you were, if you could have been down there from takeover day one to day two, to WrestleMania day one to day two, to Raw after WrestleMania to NXT, then you go home. What the hell would you say there for? That Raw was weak. Or yeah, Raw yeah. after WrestleMania, that was the weakest one of my lifetime. And Jacob, you're right, man. Tessa, I would have been a good one. You might, I mean, I think we need to try and invite her in the point. We need to know why she's not signed. <laughs> to anyone. I've heard she's got a lot of like backstage issues. So. Oh, she does. Oh, we, God, yes. But we, it, it, you know, it's bad that your backstage issues outweigh your talent. Yeah, but she's good. Like, For sure. know, man. but guys, anything else you wanted to add about WrestleMania and Raw to WrestleMania? We did it, man. We. We got out the busy season. Now we're we're going into a, I guess not really a new season. Uh, Jacob, we need to keep the promise that we kept to the fans from last year that we got to start tallying stuff up. Just like how we talked about G one about making it for like WWE. Like, so who would be their true number one contender for SummerSlam if we were keeping tabs on stuff? Mm-hmm. But, Thanks. I mean, but yeah, any any closing words, man? We did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> fans were back for two nights. Now it's back to screens. Hopefully they can get fans back permanently soon, which would be a nice touch. I know the wrestlers, like when they were standing out in the, in the when Vince was introducing everybody, you could just see the emotions on everybody. It was mm-hmm. a great sight to see. So hopefully we can get fans back permanently soon. Uh, don't expect it. Oh, no. Uh, from everything that I've heard and read so far, they have a contract with, I'm trying to think which Florida uh, arena they have, but they have a contract. It's not It's not the one they're currently on. It's another one. Uh, they have, but they have a contract through like August for like Thunder stuff. So, so they might be doing like, I could see them doing like SummerSlam with some fans or doing some partial fan stuff, but don't expect any full arenas anytime soon. Well, as you said about who could fill out AT&T Stadium, bitch, anyway, man, he's also a guy who could slither his way out of a contract. <laughs> if it really, if it yeah. really gets down to it. Yeah, I mean, if it's... And they could do it, too. I mean, the UFC's just sold out. They sold out the the arena in Jacksonville in under three minutes, 17,000 fans or however couple minutes it was. It wasn't very long. Right. I mean, it is what it is, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy the fans are there. I'm happy we were able to watch WrestleMania. I'm um, happy Peacock did not crash during WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Good job, Peacock. We all thought you were crashing. You <laughs> didn't. Good job. Yeah, so I'm happy on that and I'm happy we were able to have these big review and preview shows and now I mean we're on the road to SummerSlam but but before that we're on halfway point we're on the road to money in the bank because mm. once it's briefcase time we're going to have to really sit down and talk about who needs this briefcase the most The Fiend <laughs> The Fiend might be worse than than Otis. Otis won it and that was embarrassing. Yeah no offense to Otis. I feel like someone else should have won. Maybe the Miz, even though like they eventually gave it to the Miz anyway. Um, well, remember Tucker Tucker turned on Otis and then it didn't even come out. No story came out of it. 
And, and Otis ended up back in a tag team. A more pointless tag team. Don't you just love when they break a prominent tag team to put them with a less shadier version of tag teams? <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I seen Heavy Machinery live at an NXT house show. They were so over. Like the, the, the way they controlled the fans when they came out in a house show was awesome. And well, you know, they're they're nowhere to be seen now. Um, that's, yeah, that's bad. Um, yeah. Besides, and besides that, uh, we I know typically we give um, our updates every two weeks about wrestling and about the new season starting, but something happened that we're gonna dedicate a whole episode on our next wrestling podcast. I'm gonna tell the fans right now. We're going to be going over that top 50 women's list of all time. And that's all we're going to talk about. Because uh, we weren't able to get it because it, they were smart and they dropped it during WrestleMania season. And you thought that you saw some anger during this. Just wait till you hear us about that women's list. Because in two weeks, we'll be recording that. Fire. And if you want to come back, you're more than welcome to. Because Jacob might not even, he might, Jacob just might let me talk because, oh, God help us. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely come back for that. <laughs> there's, a, I, there's a couple of ones I, I, I got to talk about. So, yeah, I got to come back for that. <laughs> hey, if you're coming back, you're coming back, man. I love it. Then after that women's one, we'll be back to our regular two. Talking about all the that next podcast in two weeks is only about the women's outfit. Yeah. But with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. I hope you enjoyed our WrestleMania previews and reviews. And we're on the road to Money in the Bank. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. And we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care. <laughs>